boy howdy, Shaney Mers here. Didn't expect me so soon, huh? Well, be prepared to expect me a lot in the coming weeks and probably months for that matter because it appears the VR chat team caught themselves flat-footed with the pitchforks from the modding community from the launch of the security update. All of which you can see in my previous video, I'll link at the end of this one. Before we start, I want to touch on a couple specifics from my previous video, specifically on the VRChat cache and easy anti-cheats kernel level drivers bits. Now I'm going to compress a lot of information in a couple seconds, so this won't cover everything, and if you just want to get to the news and skip technicals, hit up this time in the video. I've also created chapters on the timeline so you can skip easily. First, I want to make sure it's understood that I wasn't implying the VRChat cache is encrypted when I said it was protected. It's packaged for easy reading from the client while being slightly obfuscated from people digging through the files. It's not encrypted because the keys to decrypt must be invisible to the clients like you or me. Or it's a waste of time for VRChat to code up an encryption thing as well as effort for the computer to actually do the work to unencrypt assets since it was easy to break open a client and dig around in it, which was how mods existed in the first place. With easy anti-cheat, VRChat theoretically has a layer of protection and memory to store encryption keys on a local machine during gameplay sessions, so theoretically Theoretically, we could see encrypted caches in the future, further preventing the theft of player-created assets. I also want to make it known that VRChat made no announcement of this, so if it happens, it's a pleasant surprise. Not an inevitability, but I would really be shocked if they went through all of this craziness and didn't. Second, I received a comment on my previous video from user Forever in a Day that gave me a push to RTFM, if you will, on easy anti-cheat to be more grounded in my statements on it. So let's start with Linux and thusly Steam Deck run easy anti-cheat at a user level and don't have root access to the kernel. On Windows, easy anti-cheat utilizes a Windows service to do its work. So let's get a little bit technical here. Easy Anti-Cheat EOS is a service that starts only when VRChat or another Easy Anti-Cheat supported game is starting, launching a kernel level driver that stops itself when the game closes. Kernel level drivers can do just about everything they want when open, including crash your machine if they screw up. So if you want more info on what kernel level drivers are running on your machine right now, I suggest grabbing the kernel mode drivers manager link in the description. People calling easy anti-cheat spyware is a little extreme though, as it acts responsibly on the machine when requested to close, remains closed when not being used, and uninstalls cleanly. If you're the paranoid type, Easy anti-cheat is pretty low on my threat radar. The paranoia is probably better spent on learning about on-network threats, or what mods may have taken your account info, or learning how to use a ubiquity dream machine to monitor your network for bad actors, and just don't do your taxes while playing VR chat. That would probably be the best thing to do. Okay, that took longer than I thought. Back to the news. As said the other day, VRChat has reprioritized their entire operation to focus on bringing accessibility and quality of life mods into native vanilla VRChat. And today, they've sent their first telegram to anyone who will read it. And don't worry, you don't have to. I already did. Push, push, push. Let's go over what was said. So over the past 72 hours, VRChat has been sorting through the sea of information and insults to gather the most important changes wanted by the communities. Sickest burns they received, too and prioritize them as both accessibility, which was given special priority, and quality of life fixes, which are essentially polish and enhancements to make VRChat in general more of a comfy experience. The burns were rated in severity, and some of them were hot, and I'm just kidding, but kudos to the community team for having thick skin. By the end of next week, we should be expecting several new features in VRChat. I'm not sure if that means in open beta or what, but the first of many is Horizon Adjust. Both for people who are laid up in bed and those who just don't want to get up out of it, this feature allows a user to change their horizon to whatever orientation they want. So people who are in bed can still look straight at people as if they were standing without trying to get their eyesight to the real horizon, you know what I mean? You may find a lot of people sleeping standing up in the near future, and that might actually be fun. 
Visual adjustments are features for colorblind users that are a series of filters as well as color intensity sliders to make some text or imagery viewable to people with certain icon configurations. You can also tailor these colors to certain on-screen elements as needed, like the user interface or both the user interface and the world. This sadly won't be on Quest for the version 1 release due to graphical limitations, which says a thing about meta, I think. These adjustments also don't just end at filters. It'll also add the ability to turn off bloom and change brightness and contrast too. I've heard extra levels of excitement around the ability to free themselves from bloomy eyeballs, so I'm actually also kind of excited about that too. Another feature coming next week is custom mic sensitivity which lets people in especially noisy or quiet environments to adjust the trigger point where their microphone activates. Hopefully this will minimize random activations from people's fans since it's summertime and people are literally sweating profusely out there right now. So those are the super near term stuff. There's more on the itinerary for early August. A movable main menu, for example, will let you place the menu wherever you want. Lying down, move it above your head. Standing on your head, I don't think that's in the scope, but who knows really. Also coming, the highly requested personal mirror. It's a mirror just for you, which is also highly configurable, being able to change the size, transparency, location, give it a fancy border, whether or not it turns with you, and other stuff. Or maybe you just can't wait for that and you like need a mirror right now so you can see your facial expressions. I suggest you try VR Face Checker by Rollerd for free on Booth. It, it installs easily into your avatar and gives you an overlay of your face or any other body part right here on your heads-up display. It's pretty cool. There's also a calibration mirror for full body tracking so you can calibrate with less of the guesswork, which was needed since full body tracking began on VRChat, so that'll be a nice to have. Only been how many years? Haptics on Touch is designed to give your controller haptic feedback when they come in contact with someone's avatar dynamics, like their hair or other dynamic part. Haptics are funny because that simple vibration can increase immersion when you touch fluffy tail, so it'll be really nice to get that little extra feel going on. There's a particle limiter that existed for the last couple years, hidden within the configuration with no way to touch it while VR chat's running. Adding that to the UI will let you turn on and off this limiter within VR chat, and hopefully one day we'll see more of this, like being able to change the total number of particles right there in the user interface in the future. So this might be the first time VR chat has officially mentioned support for Steam Audio. Steam Audio is really cool because it has the power to manipulate audio through walls and doors and such realistically. For example, if you're talking to someone through a wall, like through a literal wall, the audio calculates that information as well as if there's any openings between you and the other user and simulates how that would sound. So someone can open and close a door in your face while they're talking to you and their voice will change, such as becoming more clear or more muffled with the door's state. Anyway, I bring this up in particular because of local voice falloff adjustment which is a new feature that adjusts how fast other people's voices fall off with distance. Unfortunately, with Udon also being in charge of many aspects of audio and worlds, there's conflicts there that need to be fixed first before this feature will see prime time, and the conversion over to Steam Audio may have to take priority to make this work the best that it can. Valve is part of this process, so they're interested in making this accessibility part work, so that's good to hear. And that's what we have so far. What do you think? Is there a feature not on this close to shipping timeline that you think should be? Let me know in the comments. There's more that should be coming as well, but currently undisclosed. I'll keep y'all in the loop when I hear about it, so click the subscribe button to get it in your feed. And until next time, this is Shaney Merst here, signing out. See you soon. How do people get good frames in here?